Huge win for BYU women's volleyball. Top oh 20 gosh. showdown yeah. beating up on Pepperdine on Saturday. We welcome you back to BYU Sports Nation live in Studio B and on cue. The fastest coach to 200 wins in NCAA history in volleyball is in studio. Heather Olmstead joining us. Heather, first and foremost, congratulations on hitting that 200 mark. And like, what a way to do it against number 17 Pepperdine. Thanks. That was a great match. Oh. It, it was unbelievable uh, because it's it. It would be amazing to get 200 no, how, no matter how you got it. And you were going to get it. You had nine games to set the record, which is crazy. But uh, to do it against that team on that day, what did that mean to you? Have you taken it in? I think it's super cool. The girls were so excited. And it just means we've had a lot of great players come through our program since I've been here and been blessed to be able to coach at BYU. Um, I've had Dave Height with me the whole time. Johnny was, came the second season. So it means we've had some consistency, not only with the staff, but with the players and how good and great they want to be. So it was fun. They were excited, and it was, it was good. It was a great win over a good Pepperdine team. So I thought the whole day was just fantastic for our team. Okay, take a look at this list of the top coaches in, in history and the fact that you are uh, the fastest. What does that mean to you? Because when you talk about Dave, Terry, Don, Russ, these are some of the greatest names in the history of the game, Hall of Famers. Absolutely. That, that list is, those are legend, legendary coaches. So um, my mind actually goes to the list of coaches that have been there for me, that have mentored me um, and have supported me throughout my career. That, that's where my mind goes. So those, are, those are great coaches. All credit to them and what they've done. But I think about um, my dad who, who coached me, Kathy Gregory. I think about Burt Fuller who gave me my first job and, <laughs> and my brother who mentored me and Beth Lanier. Like all the, those are the names that come to mind and just very grateful for people that believed in me and gave me my start in coaching and the McGowans, Chris and Carl. That's where my mind goes um, just because it's, it's hard to win and to be successful and to have people support you throughout your career. It means a lot. I don't know what you're doing. But I think every coach across the country wants to know what you're doing, Heather. Maybe you don't <laughs> want to give those secrets away, but like 225 total matches, you've won 200. I mean, what? How, how do you establish that type of culture? What are you doing to establish that type of winning precedent? Yeah, we have young women at BYU that want to be great, that you know believe in themselves, they know what they want, and they're hungry to keep getting better and, and to have success on and off the court. So I think the secret really is the players in the program how you recruit, you know, how you train. We feel confident in how we can train our players and, and our staff. But I really think the magic is the student athletes. You, you know that, you watch them. They're, they're, they're the, the people come to watch our team and that's really cool. And, and we, we put on a good show on Saturday. So yeah. it was just super cool. It was a good show. And it was a match that, I wouldn't say it was the cleanest or most efficient, yeah. but you said after the game to Kenzie uh, in your interview that you loved that that's how that game played out. Why was that? Why were you okay with winning that type of game. Yeah, we had to show some grit, some fight, some resiliency. Uh, we came out in set one, like, really assertive and, and really putting it to them, and then they came back and gave it right back to us, and we had a choice to make. We made some changes. We had all hands on deck. We had everybody available to help the team win. We were problem-solving the whole match. Those are the funnest matches where it's just a grind, and we saw some fight and some resiliency from our girls, and, and they just looked each other in the eye and said, let's go, we're doing this, and they just... I mean, even up until match point, you know, we had a couple match points where it's like, here we go. What, what type of team are we going to be? This is a chance for us to step up and for someone to make a play. And sure enough, Aaron Livingston mm. gets it done. You have faced some significant challenges. I mean, three top ten teams that are all still in the top ten. You get your first ranked win against Pepperdine. San Diego looms their yeah. number four. So how do you take those frustrating experiences and m kind of mold that into something that can be positive and help get your girls ready for the likes of San Diego and, and other good West Coast Conference teams further down the line? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're looking at those experiences as, as things that can help us grow and, and learn and get better and figure out what we need to do to, to get better and to challenge ourselves. And we knew Pepperdine was an opportunity. Look, here it is. It came quicker than we thought after those matches that we, you know, we, we weren't able to capitalize on. And what are we going to do about this match right here in front of us, including Thursday LMU, who goes and plays San Diego really tough mm -hmm. you know, two days later. We know that. This conference is, is loaded top to bottom, and it's a challenge every time we get on the court. We're going to have a challenge this, this week on the road. And so we're just looking to get better every day. And, and if you can take something from each match to get a little bit better, we're looking at the Pepperdine match. What can we do today to get better for this Thursday based off even you know, a win? We've got to be able to learn from wins. Portland and Gonzaga on the road this week. I know the fans show up with those. Hey, last time Absolutely. to see BYU in yep. Portland and Spokane in the West Coast Conference, right? Um, this, this group has been a little unique. You've needed to rely on the middles uh, more. You're still figuring out 
the second outside hitter spot. Kate Grimmer's an excellent passer. Offense has been a little down. What's it been like to sort of try and figure this out this year with this group? Because you're still winning despite yeah. not being the same sort of formula. Yeah, we love setting our middles. We love running our offense through our middles. I think one of Whitney Bauer's strengths is being able to find and look. I mean, I, I was watching film um, of her setting the middles on the floor. She's on the ground. And there's, there's good times to do that and, and not good times where I'm like, hey, probably <laughs> not a good time. But anytime you get a kill out of it, it's a great time. And she ducks down. Like, she'll, she'll just get low and then set up. And that, yeah. a lot of that's because the pass will be low. So she'll have to mm -hmm. get a little bit lower to get some, some, some leverage there. But I think our ability to set our offense through our middles and establish the middles, and they're doing such a great job, opens up some, some pins. But, yeah, we're, we're continually trying to problem solve and give – players opportunities to step up and I think that's what's great and special about this team is you know we do have some positions that are that are locked up but we have positions that are still competing and we're still trying to figure out exactly what that looks like and if if we're not exactly playing or uh, executing at the highest level we're gonna give other players opportunities um, but we want them to feel comfortable and know that they can make mistakes and and we're just trying to you know win and they know that and so they're they're all they're all supportive of that. How do you balance that? Because that's a tricky line to walk of like, you know, you want your players to be able to learn and grow. Like you said, you can make mistakes and it, it's OK. But at some point you're like, hey, it's time to put up and play and do the right thing. So how how do you adequately walk the line with this team in that regard? Yeah, I think continually talking them through it, giving them opportunities in practice, helping them uh, rely on their previous experience of, of having success. And some of them have great success in matches. I thought Elise Stoll went in and, and, and brought the energy and brought a couple kills that we needed, especially in the third set. She went high hands and, and provided a spark there. And I thought Aria playing in the libero, yeah. you know, provided a spark for us there. So You switched to mid-match. Yep. Yeah, and I think that, that's what I'm saying. All hands on deck. We need everyone available to help this team be the very best we can be and not be so worried about the outcome or, or winning conference or winning and losing matches. But how good can this group be? at the end of season as we head into the tournament because every year it's tough to win conference and um, it's winning is, is extremely difficult and so we've got to stick together and believe in each other and, and just keep trying to get better. 225. That's a nice round number on all accounts. That's pretty right. good. Just, and, and by the way, another stat that I'll just uh, say in front of Heather. Number one in win percentage, not just among active coaches, all freaking time <laughs> in women's volleyball. Amazing. <laughs> Heather, thanks for coming on the program. Thanks Congratulations. For me. Congrats. We appreciate you guys. Thank you.